If your pupil is present, click Student Available. This will advance you to the next screen where you can select the pupil's reading level. If your pupil is not available, click Phone Answered but Student Unavailable. This will automatically generate a report to let us know your student was not present for the session. You will also get a prompt to reschedule your session. If you try to call the class but the phone is not answered, we recommend you either contact chat support or click here to restart. Please give it a few minutes before you try again. The class might be late returning from another activity. Year one life can be busy. Prior to your session, the classroom computer will be sitting in a virtual queue waiting for you to connect. When your audio call is answered and you indicate that your student is available, your computer connects with the classroom computer in the virtual queue. Unlike screen sharing, your computer and the classroom computer are independent even though they display the same material. As the tutor, you control the session and decide what activities to show to your student. The first step to getting started with the activities will be to select your student's reading level. This is done for both flashcards and stories. Reading levels are set by the teacher and will be listed above the reading level buttons. If the teacher doesn't move the pupil's reading level after a 30 day period, the system will prompt you to move the student to the next reading level. If you find the material is too difficult for your student, you can always move them back to the previous reading level and then try advancing them again the following week. As you work with your pupil, keep in mind that rewarding their success is an important component in building reading confidence. While verbal praise is very motivating and should be given often, we also provide several high five pop-ups you can use to further reward your students' hard work. Let's now walk through the activities in the tutoring application, demonstrating how you and your pupil will see them during a real session. What follows is our guidance on how to structure your tutoring sessions. While we have suggestions about the time you could spend on each activity, do remember that this is not set in stone. Feel free to experiment with what works best for you and the child you're supporting. The first activity in the sequence is flashcards. Flashcards has two functions. It gives students an opportunity to practice sight words and it tests students' knowledge of words that follow similar patterns. Both are learned skills that will help increase reading proficiency. Spend five minutes at the beginning of your session on flashcards. Your pupil's flashcard level may be more advanced than their reading level. Once your student is reading at level orange, you can skip the flashcard activity and focus more time on reading. When you click on a word, your student will see the same word on their screen. Each time your pupil gets a word correct, mark the word green by clicking on the green button. If your student struggles with a word or gives an incorrect response, mark the card red by clicking on the red button. Your student will only see the words you show them and will not see the words you have colour coded in green or red. To confirm your student has received the flashcard you sent, watch for the sending to and received by prompt. This feature is available for every activity and will help you gauge when the student can see the material you sent. The next activity in the series is stories. Reading stories out loud is the most important thing your student will do as it's where he or she gets a chance to practice. You should ideally spend 15 to 20 minutes of your session each week reading stories, but each child will be different, and some may not be able to concentrate on reading for that long earlier in the year. When you're ready to read stories, click on the story icon from the activity menu, select the appropriate reading level, and click continue to open the story library. A library of levelled books will be displayed in the Tutormate Stories tab. Depending on what level your student is reading at, there are three types of stories to choose from, simple stories, reading stories, and extension stories. Simple stories appear at the lower reading levels and contain short words that the child should know at this reading level using phonic patterns that they've already been taught, like hat and pat. For unconfident readers, this is a good place to start as the text is simple. Remember that for early readers, even very brief words can be challenging to read. When reading simple stories, we want students to gain confidence and practice reading with fluency. Reading fluently means that a child can read without having to stop and sound out words. And as they progress, they can also start to use expression to enliven the story. Reading stories use both words that students should know and also those that they're learning in year one or two. 
By reading these stories, students are increasing their word knowledge and practising newly learned words. Once you feel your student has mastered a level of reading stories, it may be time to test their fluency skills using the simple stories which appear at higher levels. The stories in the tab that you select, whether it is the Simple Stories tab or the Reading Stories tab, will be visible in rows on both your screen and on the student's screen. Have fun with your pupil choosing which story they want to read and guessing what they might be about. The student can tell you which book he or she would like to read by giving you the number next to the book title or describing the picture. You will select that story and your student can begin reading. Let's take a look at a typical story and make sure it's clear what you do and what your pupil will see. When you choose a story from the library, the child will see page one of that story on their screen. While you can advance the stories forward using the arrow keys, your pupil will not have that option and can only see the page number. You might decide to look through or walk through the whole book with your pupil before reading it. You can mention some of the key words and give them a sense of the story before they read it, which can boost the confidence of early or reluctant readers. You may also want to take turns reading with your pupil if they often struggle. You could alternate reading each page. This is a good way of taking the pressure off and modelling fluent, expressive reading. Do remember to use the pictures in each story too. When you start to read each page, you can help your pupil prepare to read by asking them to look at the picture and describe what they think the story is about. As you read, you may want your student to focus on a particular word. You can do this in two ways. First, you can click on a word on your screen which will highlight the word on the child's view of the page, or you can show that word to your student by typing in the message box. For example, if your student is struggling with the word sing, you can type the word or its individual letters in the message student box and send that word to your student. Remind them to sound it out using their phonics, but don't hesitate to give them the word if they seem stuck. When you send the word to your pupil in this way, it will appear for them as if spoken by a small owl in the top left of the screen. Asking them what the owl is saying is a good way to check they can see the word that you've sent. Asking questions about the story is a good way to see if your student is able to remember key points of the story. Can the student tell you about the story in their own words or make connections between the story and their own experiences? Not all stories include comprehension questions, but feel free to spend time asking your student about the story when you're finished reading. If a story does include comprehension questions, they will be presented on your screen at the end of the story. The pupil screen will display pictures to help them remember what the story is about. Extension stories are presented in later levels. These are very engaging texts covering varied topics, many of which are sponsored by our partners. Some introduce science-related content about the Earth, space exploration and chemistry. In addition to providing stories for practicing reading and fluency skills, we also provide students with word games designed to build their knowledge of words and word parts. You can fit these in between stories to break up reading or offer children a chance to do them before you say goodbye for the week. Feel free to experiment. There are three word activities to choose from, word sort, three in a row and mystery word. What follows is a brief look at each game to view step-by-step -step instructions, click on the directions link at the top of each page. In the word sort activity, students will practice sorting words based on their word endings. This is great practice for students learning how to sound out words. As the tutor, you will select the word from a list of nine words you'll see above coloured boxes. Your student will see the same word on their screen, but will only see one word, not the menu that you have. Ask your student where the word belongs based on the word ending. Once you click on the appropriate box, the word will populate and the student will see the same word on their screen. Once all the words have been placed in a box, draw your student's attention to the similarities of the words, then ask your student to read the words in each box. Three in a row is a favourite activity for many students. This additional exposure to words will help encourage fluent reading and word identification. When you're ready to begin, determine who will be a cross and who will be a naught. Notice each box has a word. Your pupil can see the same words as you. Taking turns, you and your student will try to be the first to get three crosses or noughts in a row, up, down, across or diagonally. When you place a cross or a nought in the box, your student will see the same thing on their screen. Mystery word is a fun way of learning vocabulary and will help students remember the spelling of new words. To begin, think of a word or use one of the suggested words found on the right side of your screen. The student cannot see these words. 
When you have a word in mind, click on the number of letters of the word. Your student will see the same number of blank spaces on their screen. As your student begins to guess letters, click on the letter on the keyboard. This will highlight that letter for both you and your student. Place your cursor on the appropriate line and select the letter using your computer keyboard. Your student will see each letter on their screen. You may find your student needs a little help getting started with this activity. Consider filling in the first letter or offering a clue to help your student guess the word. The whiteboard simulates a magnetic board and is great for practicing spelling, difficult words, or making up fun sentences. Type a word or phrase in the field at the bottom of the screen. When you click Submit Word, your student will see the same word or phrase on their screen. You can also move words and phrases around by dragging anywhere on the board. Why not make up a story together each week? Now we've been over the main activities possible in each session, giving you a sense of what you and your student will see. As you work with your pupil, you may want to make, for your own use, a record of their progress or identify skills that need more work during your next session. To record notes during an active session, click on the Session Notes link found on each activity page and enter your comments. You can also record notes before or after an active session or review previous notes by clicking on the Notes icon located in the User menu on the home page. Please do not use notes to report a problem or ask a question. Teachers and the TutorMate team will not be reviewing your notes. The primary function of this feature is for you to track, for yourself, your pupil's success and progress. If you would like to communicate with your teacher, please use the messaging section of the tutoring platform. While it may be tempting to spend more time with your student, please end your session promptly after 30 minutes. There may be another tutor scheduled immediately after your session, and the system only allows for one tutoring session to be running at a time. To disengage from the session, Click on End Session from the menu or click the red End link at the top of the page. You will be redirected to the home page and you can log out of the application.